Welcome to the Bagode Extreme Review. I'm going to talk about the good, the not so good. We're also going to go over the air shock of the Bagode. We're actually also going to compare how the Extreme 50E version compares to the 40T, whether there's actually a difference in performance. Bagode really needs the Extreme to work. I mean, they've been counting on this. This is why they have taken the time to develop this wheel. It's taken so long. We've heard about it for such a long time and it seems like they're not gonna go back to the roots of releasing 20 wheels a year. So, let's watch the review and find out if it's any good. Thanks to eWheels for sponsoring this video, check them out in the link below. So let's talk about the Bagode Extreme. We're going to pull these out of the rain. The rain pretty much just stopped. See how the wheel does still on still functioning let's check this one let's talk about the extreme here so let's start off with the positives of the big out extreme first off which is the most obvious is going to be the torque the torque on this wheel even though it doesn't feel um, as balanced perhaps as uh, some of the other wheels on the market it still has plenty of power there's a lot of torque you basically just can't make the pedals go soft. So this is gonna be the perfect wheel for the uh, off-road enthusiast. If you're a jumper, the travel of this is insane. 130 millimeters of suspension travel. And honestly, with the 40 T-cells and 350 amps, I'm so glad they decreased the amps. This is gonna be one of the go-to wheels if you're an off-roader. Now the build quality, following the success of the EX30, They've done a phenomenal job uh, in terms of Bagode workmanship. It's a whole lot better. It has still this industrial design, but everything is a little bit more thought out, starting with the kickstand, right? Um, kickstand actually works now. Now, it's obviously not pretty in this position, but at least the kickstand works well. It's not gonna easily topple over. The battery packs now come with metal casing and the pads are adjustable. These pads are also not too bad. They're actually pretty good for what you get stock. I would highly suggest cutting this and then just locking in um, and that way you can have your bottom jump pad and your top pad um, adjust to different heights if you wish. But obviously still I think Grizzla if you you know have a flat surface that's still going to be the go-to option but stock pads are not bad for sure. So two more additional things that you may not know about the Bagode Extreme that I think are pretty cool is this rear light. This rear light actually looks pretty, pretty sick. And it comes with integrated speakers. Now these speakers are not the noisy, really loud kind that you'll get from Kingsong. These are really like, if you're cruising at 30, you'll be able to hear your music. Not really for going, you know, 70 and then being able to hear all the music and kind of blasting down the streets and annoying everyone around you. But it does come with it, so that's really cool. An additional thing with the Extreme is this is actually one of the easiest wheels to transition from a standing to a sitting uh, position. I also appreciate Bagode actually putting in more effort to integrate a smart BMS for better safety management, as well as allowing riders to fully customize ride performance. Now let's talk about the negatives of the Bagode Extreme. Starting off with the front headlight. Now even though adjust they are adjustable, they don't adjust very easily. And I just find that the headlight just isn't quite bright enough. Now, let's talk about the situation back here. Starting off with the rear light. Uh, the rear light, although is very pretty, it doesn't have any protection. 
So in a crash, this is gonna fall off. I've already seen it happen. I wanna tell you guys about the air shock. The first air shock that they made, I believe, was on the Bagot Hero. Now they've made huge, huge improvements on the air shock itself. For one, it holds air a whole lot better. So if that's your concern, it's no longer something you'll have to constantly worry about. But I still do carry a pump with me. In terms of adjustment, you still can't get the fine adjustments like you can by putting in a third party shock. I've done, I've used the DNM 36 RC, which is the more economical air shock option here. But the standard air shock for Bagode works pretty well, but fine tune adjustments like slow rebound, fast rebound, there's not that many options, as well as the fact that it still makes quite a bit of noise during compression or rebound. So there's been a few instances of the Bagode Extreme rear suspension rod bending, and that basically comes down to the improper coil pound per inch for the rider and the ride style that they're using it for. Now, in both of these wheels, I have both a 700 pound and a 900 pound uh, coil, and my buddy who is 75 kilograms was able to bottom, out, bottom it out, and I do have preload as well as both of the suspension is set in the hard mode. Now let's go over where you would pick between the coil or the air shock. The benefit of the coil shock is that once you set it, it's not something you'll have to worry about. So it's perfect for people who are going everyday commute and just want a comfortable ride. Because once you set it up, you never really have to worry about it again. Now keep in mind, if you do bottom it out, there is a risk of you damaging the rod, at least in the current stage of the Bagoda Extreme right now. Now with the air shock, you'll be able to use the full suspension travel because when you set up the preload on the coil on the Bagoda Extreme, you're actually eating away at the suspension travel. You're compressing the shock and you'll not be able to use maybe the last few centimeters of the uh, stanchion travel. With the Bagoda Air Shock, you'll be able to use 130 millimeters of suspension travel as long as you fully set up the PSI correctly. You'll get a really comfortable ride and you'll actually be able to switch it out. But the negative thing with a Bagoda Air Shock or any Air Shock for that matter is you'll have to go through maintenance. Now that may mean depending on how much usage, maybe once a year or once every two years. So again, if you're someone that doesn't want to worry about their shock on their electric unicycle, go with the coil. Uh, if you're someone that's going off-roading or pushing their wheels to perhaps extreme limits, then consider the oil, sh uh, consider the air shock is my personal opinion. Hopefully this helps you out in deciding between the coil and the air shock. So that's something to watch out for, but as something that comes stock with your Bagot Extreme, the air shock is not bad at all. The second negative thing, or the other negative thing I want to talk about with the Bagot Extreme is, are these pedals. Now, this one closer to me is a newer style pedal. It's a lot thinner, and then that is kind of the OG CNC pedal. Those are thicker. So this wheel being basically 40 kilos with the stock pads on, I understand they're trying to minimize weight by using these thinner pedals, but it doesn't hold out well in a crash. They tend to bend very easily compared to those ones. So I'm not sure which they're shipping with, but I'm really kind of hoping personally that I'm getting the thicker ones because those ones will last a lot better in a crash. And if you're going, if you're using this wheel as an off-roader, you're obviously more concerned about durability and you want it to perform well in that front. Now, I have to say that the Bagoda Extreme doesn't feel quite as nippy as some of the other 16 inch wheels currently on the market and some that's coming up. Now it does feel a little bit better when you upgrade the Extreme to the 320, 350 amp firmwares that they've been testing. Um, the stock firmware is 250 amps. I hope they find a way to have the wheel uh, carry the 300 or 320 amp power that I think a lot of people would like. It makes the wheel a little bit more nimble. Some other minor details are, the mud part still sprays water onto your back, so you'll have to perform a bit of DIY if you don't want splashback. Also, because we are still on the very first production stages of the Extreme, there are still bugs in the firmware that needs to be sorted out, such as the Extreme having tilt back in the middle of the air after a jump, or vibrations when accelerating or decelerating at full battery. The handle also needs work, it's still very flimsy like the last few releases. Bagot are not known for their detailed design, but rather their performance to price ratio, and none of what I would have said would have surprised you, a lot of which I would imagine will be fixed very soon. However, as an early adopter, 
you'll own an off-road beast that has huge suspension travel. So we have two extremes here, and I have Xiao helping me out. He's on the 40T cell. We're gonna switch over, but I'm on the 50E, and we're gonna test if there's a torque difference. Now, both of these wheels are on four out of five batteries, so they're pretty even in battery power, and they're pretty full. So we're gonna climb this hill, stop halfway, and then torque it up and see if we can find a difference whether the 40T um, maintains the hard pedals or perhaps maybe the 50E gives out and becomes a little bit soft. Now both of these wheels are on the 350 amp test firmware right now. Um, so yeah, let's let's go, let's try it out. Shao is gonna go first, he's on the 40T. Let's see how the torque is. And stop. <laughs> That's a burnout. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. No sign of giving out. Let's switch the wheels and uh, see if there's an, any noticeable difference. Okay, so from what Xiao was saying, he's tested both, I've tested both. We both feel like there's not much of a difference between the torque, between the 40T and the 50E. I'm here with Xiaowu and we are gonna do an extreme torque test. We're gonna basically go on this grass and torque from zero as hard as we can and see if the pedals go soft. Now, this one here is the 40T and this is the 50E. The 50E is currently at 123 volts with basically 71% battery, 119. So it's a bit less in voltage and it's only at 57%. But for whatever information we can get out of this, hopefully it might help you guys in deciding whether you want the 40T or the 50E. So let's go. Sai, R, E, go. Much closer, but I mean, there's a pot, again, like I said, there's a possibility of rider error. This may not be the most scientific test but we're doing what we can here. Sa, R, E, go. What's up? Sa, R, E, go. Three, two, one, go. The 40 T even though it's at a lower voltage, it seems to accelerate easier compared to the 50E. Start essentially on the edge of this concrete or where this concrete block is, right here. Got the 40T, we're gonna race all the way to that podium. Like I said, screen recording, basically full voltage, 131. And we'll see, I'm pretty sure this is keeping stat data, so I'm not really familiar with the UC world. But official take one, I guess. Ready? So we are on the 50E version, full battery, 131 volt. So really similar to the 40T. We're gonna do a screen recording as well and make sure we're logging our ride. And uh, yeah, let's go. Same thing, we're gonna start over there and end up somewhere by this pole here. And uh, have, the, have this tell us if the sag is significantly more on the 50E.
To sum it up, the higher discharge 40T cells had less voltage sag. The 50E sagged 6.1 volts versus 40T which sagged only 5.73 volts. This is also close to full charge too, at a speed of only 60 km an hour. Sag will increase as the voltage of the wheel gets lower. If you want to push the wheels or are just concerned about safety over range, I highly suggest getting the 40T cells to provide you with more safety margin. That's it for the Bigot Extreme Review. Thank you for watching. Thanks for, you know, being a subscriber. I'll catch you guys in the next review. Peace.